to come. <laughs> All right, Lily, uh, you're up. Me? Mm? Yes. Great. Hi, I'm Amelia. I'm playing Aegeus, um, Hermia's dad, who has been cut in every uh, version of this I've ever done. <laughs> so. <laughs> He usually gets cut to like one or two lines and one of the mechanicals just plays him, so. Um, at least All right, one Dre and Kate. Hi, Dad. <laughs> You're doing, um, I'm Kate, I'm doing Francis Flute. Uh, oh, I'm going to be Demetrius slash Melissa Huckabee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Britt, you're up. Um, hello, I'm Britt, Dre Phrasing. Um, I'll be reading Snout, um, and I think this is super cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sarah D. Hey, I'm Sarah. I'm playing Lysander as a girl. Lesbian Lysander. Lysandra? <laughs> oh, still Lysander. Oh, okay. As a girl. You're right. <laughs> okay. Grace. And I'm drinking Corona because it's only appropriate. Don't do that. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, my name is Grace and I am Queen Titania, your fairy queen. All right, Helen. <laughs> hi, I'm Helen. I'm reading Peter Quince playing as a Detroit Lions fan because, you know, we're both hopeless. So, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Even? Does the presence of a Detroit Lions fan turn this immediately into a tragedy regardless, or? <laughs> I'm here to bring everybody down, so, you know. <laughs> uh, my name is Steven Saltzman. I'll be Robin Starveling, and also uh, introduce the play within the play. There's Jonathan! <laughs> <Ooh>. <gasps> hey, Jonathan! Oh, he's coming, he's coming, hold on. All right, Sydney, Sydney go ahead while we wait for him. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Sydney, and I will be playing Hermia. Nice to meet you all. I'm very excited. Uh, yep. Ramses. Hmm? Ramses. Ramses. Oh, their their sounds their sound is off. There we go. Hi. Um, I'm Sandra Ramsey. I'm going to be playing Hippolyta. I'm Seth, and I'll be playing Theseus. And we just met tonight, so. <laughs> <laughs> what a coincidence. <laughs> All right, Catherine. Me? No, the other one. Yes, you. Oh, okay. It's because my name is Katrine. <laughs> that is spelled It's Catherine. true. That is her yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. Um, I go by, my name is Kat, and I'm doing a mustard seed. Oh, yeah. So. You'll always be mom to me, Kat. Okay, so Cassidy, there is no way for you to be right side up. I mean, <laughs> mustn't come inside. I like it. You know what? Cool. You know what? Helen was, Helena, her, most of her arc is is sad and upside down, right, Katie? How about so, we all just hang upside down? <laughs> <laughs> all right, introduce yourself, Cassidy. Hello, everybody. I'm Cassidy Fajardo. I'll be playing maybe Helena, Helena, but. I'll be playing Cobweb, so hello. <laughs> hello. Jonathan's here. Can you hear us, Jonathan? Uh-oh. Oh, no. So this audio is still connecting. <gasps> there he is. All right. Yay. I think this might work now. OK, time Except to now I can only see oh. Rebecca. Hmm. Put it, have okay, you put it I'll in? Make that work. I say, yeah, speaker. I just needed to be on gallery. OK, here we go, because it's on the iPad now. All right. Okay. Good God. Okay. Who are you? Who are you playing? Who am I? I'm uh I am playing Oberon. And and his name's Jonathan. My name's Jonathan. Wait, who are you? The visual. Yeah. <laughs> and let me just say Oberon. <laughs> well, um, yeah, let's do this. Um, Ramses, whenever you are Ready. Now, Ferropolito, I'm not sure our draws on a pace. 
Four happy days bring in another moon, but oh, me thinks how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers my desires like a step in or dowager, long withering out young man's revenue. For days will quickly steep themselves in night, for nights will quickly dream away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bone bent in heaven, shall behold the night of our solemnities. Go, Philistrate, stir up the Athenian youth to merriments. Awake the heart and nimble spirits of mirth, turn melancholy forth to funerals, and the pale companion is not for our pomp. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword and won thy love doing thee injuries, but I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with traveling. Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I, with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at her window sung with feigning voice verses of feigning love and stolen the impression of her fantasy with bracelets of thy hair, rings, gods, conceits, knacks, trifles, nosegays, sweetmeats, messengers of strong prevailment is in unhardened youth. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart, turned her obedience, which is due me, to stubborn harshness. And, my gracious duke, be it so she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens, as she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law, immediately provided in that case. Say you, Hermia, uh, be advised, fair maid, to you your father should be as a god, one that composed your beauties, yea, and one to whom you are but as form and wax, by him imprinted and within his power to leave the figure or disfigure it. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself he is, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father looked but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I may, may uh, made bold, nor how it may concern my modesty, in such a presence here to plead my thoughts. But I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires. Know of your youth, examine well your blood. When you yield not your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun, for I to be in the shady cloister mute, to live in a barren sister all your life, chanting faint hymns to the cold fruitless moon. Thrice blessed they may mas that master that sow their blood to undergo such maiden pilgrimage. But earth their happy is rose distilled, than that which withering on the virgin thorn grows, lives and dies in a single blessedness. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will my virgin patten up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause. By the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me, for everlasting bond of fellowship, upon that day either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else wed Demetrius as he would, or on Diana's altar to protest for I austerity in single life. Relent, sweet Hermia. Lysander, yield thy crazy title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Scornful, Lysander. True, he hath my love, and what is mine, my love shall render him. And she is mine, and all my right of her, I do estate unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well posset, my love is more than his, my fortunes ever weigh as fairly ranked, if not with vantage as Demetrius, as which is more than all these boasts can be. I am beloved of beauteous Hermia, why should not I then pros prosecute my right, 
Demetrius, all about shit to his head, made love to Nieder's daughter, Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon his spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I've heard so much. And with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof, but being over full of stuff affairs, I find it losing. But Demetrius, come, and come, Aegeus, you shall go with me. I have some tooling for you both. You, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yield you up, which by no means we may extenuate to death, or to a vow of single life. Come, my Apollo, <laughs> what cheer, my love? Demetrius and Aegeus, I must, I must employ you in some business against our nuptial and confer with you of something nearly that concerns yourselves. With duty and desire, we follow you. Oh no, my love, why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? We like for want of rain, which I could well between them form the tempest of my eyes. Ay me, for aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or history, the course of true love never did run smooth. But either it was different in blood. Oh, cross too high to be enthralled too low. Or else Miss Grafton in respect of years. Oh, spy too old to be engaged too young. Or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Oh, hell, to choose love by another's eyes. Or, if there were sympathy and choice, war, death, or sickness did lay siege to it, making it momentary as a sound, swift as the shadow, short as any dream, brief as the lightning in the collated night, that in a spleen enfolds both heaven and earth, and ere a man hath power to say, behold, the jaws of darkness do devour it up. So quick bright things come to confusion. If then true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Then let us teach our trials patience, because it is a customary cross as due to love as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, poor fancy's followers. A good persuasion. Therefore hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, dowager, of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens in her house, remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee. From that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, a league without the town, to do observance, Sorry, where I did meet thee once with Helena to do observance in the morn of May. Therefore, I will stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, by the simplicity of Venus' doves, by that which knitteth souls and prospers loves, and by the fire that which burned the Carthage uh, queen, when the false Trojan under sail was seen, by all the vows that ever men have broke, and numbers more than ever woman spoke, in the same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly I will meet with thee. He promised, love. Look, here comes Helena. Godspeed, fair Helena. Whither away? <laughs> Call you me fair. That fair against uncertain. loves you fair. <laughs> so happy fair. Eyes are what stars and long sweet air more terrible than the lark to the shepherd ear when we experience the hawthorn bud appears goodness is catching so were favored so yours would i catch fair hermia ere i go my hair should catch your hair my eye should catch your eye my tongue should catch your tongue sweet melody were the world mine demetrius being baited the rest I give to be you translated. Oh, teach me how you look, and with the art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns would teach my smile such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection and love. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hated me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty. Would that fault were mine? Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. 
Lysander and myself will fly this place. Before the time I did Lysander see, seemed Athens as a paradise to me. Oh, then, what graces in my love do dwell, that he hath turned a heaven unto a hell. doth behold her silver visage in a watery glass ducking with liquid pearl the bladed grass at time that lover's flight doth still conceal through athens gates we have device to steal and in the wood oh. where often you and i upon fate primrose beds were off, uh, were wont to lie emptying our bosoms of their consul sweet there my Lysander and myself shall meet, and thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet playfellow, pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep word, Lysander, we must starve our sight from lover's food till tomorrow deep midnight. How happy some other some can be. Through Athens I am though thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks he will not know what all but he do know. And he and as he is, doting on Hermia's eyes, so I admiring of his qualities. Things base and bile holding no quantity. Love can transpose to form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is wing keepers and painted blind. When the hath love mine of any judgment taste, wings and no eyes figured unheedy haste, and therefore is love said to be a child, because in choice he is so oft beguiled, as waggish boys in game themselves forswear. So the boys love to do everywhere. For ere Demetrius looked on him, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. And when this hailed some heat from Hermia fell, so he dissolved and showers of oath did melt. I will go tell him Hermia's life. Then to the wood he will tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, I have her to thank. It is a dear expense, but hearing mean I to enrich my pain, to have his scythe thither and back again. Is all our company here? You were best to call them generally, man by man, according to the script. Here is a scroll of every man's name, which is thought fit through all Athens to play in our interludes before the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Peter Quince, say what the play <laughs> treats on, then read the names of the actors, and so grow to the point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, uh, I assure you, and, and a Mary. Uh, now, good Peter Quince, call, call forth your actors by the scroll. Masters, spread yourselves. Mm. And sir, as I call you. Nick Bottom the Weaver? Ready. Name what part I am for and proceed. <laughs> you, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. Well, that will ask some tears in the true performing of it. But if I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. Uh, I will move storms. I, I will condole in some measure to the rest. You, uh, uh, yet my, my chief humor is for a tyrant. I could play Ercles rarely, or a part to tear a cat, to tear a cat in, to make all split. The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates, and Phoebus's car shall shine from far and make and mar the foolish fates. Oh, this was lofty. <laughs> now, uh, na name the rest of the players. This is Ericles Bane, a tyrant's bane, a lover for condoling. Hmm. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. 
<laughs> uh, flute, you must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight. It is the lady that Pyramus must love. Nay, faith, let me not play a woman. I have a fear coming in. <sighs> That's all one. You shall play it in a mask, and you may speak as small as you will. And, and I might, I might have hide my face. Let me play Thisbe too. I'll speak in a in a monstrous little voice. Disney, Disney, ah, Pyramus, my lover, dear, thought this, thought this be dear and lady dear. No, 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 no. You must play Pyramus and flute you, Thisbe. Well, proceed. <laughs> Robin Starveling, the tailor. Uh, here, Peter Quince. Yeah, uh, Robin Starveling, you must play Thisbe's mother. Uh, Tom Snout, the tinker. Yeah, Peter Quince. You, Pyramus' father, myself, Thisbe's father. Uh, Snug the jo joiner, you the lion's part. <laughs> and I hope here is a play fitted. Have you the lion's part written? Pray you, if it be, give it to me, for, for I am slow of study. <laughs> you may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. But let me play the lion too. I will roar that I, that I will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will make the Duke say, let him roar again. Uh, yeah. Let him roar again. And you should do it too terribly. You would fright the Duchess and the ladies, that they would shriek, and that's enough to hang us all. I grant you, friends, if you should fry the ladies of, out of their wits, that they should have no more uh, discretion but to hang us. Uh, but I will aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently <laughs> as any sucking dove. dove. I, I, I will roar you an antwer and a nightingale. <laughs> You can play no part but Pyramus, for Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, a proper man, as one shall see in a summer's day, a most lovely, gentleman-like man. Therefore, your needs play Pyramus. Ah, well, I will undertake it. What beard were I best to play it in? Why, what you will. Uh, I will discharge it in either your, your straw-colored beard or your orange tawny beard, uh, your, your purple and grain beard, or, or your French crown color beard, your, your, your perfect yellow. Uh, some of your French crowns have no hair at all, and then you will pay, play bareface. But masters, here are your parts, and I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to con them by tomorrow night and meet me in the palace wood a mile without the town by moonlight. There we will rehearse, for if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged with company and our devices known. In the meantime, I will draw up a bill of our property such as our play wants. I pray you fail me not. We will meet, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect. Adieu. At the Duke's Oak we meet. Enough! Hold or cut bowstrings. Enough. Enough. Catch me. 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 Thorough flood, thorough fire, I do wander everywhere. Swifter than the moon's fear, and I serve the fairy queen. To her orbs upon the green, the cowslips tall, her pensioners be. On their gold coat spots you see. Those be rubies, fairy favors, in those freckles live their savors! <laughs> I must go seek some drew dew drops here and hang a pearl in every cow's lips here. <laughs> Farewell, thou lob of spirits, I'll be gone. <laughs> Our queen and all the elves come here alive. Uh -oh. The king did 
keep his revels here tonight, and take heed the queen come not within his sight. For Oberon is passing fell and wrath, because she hath, as she, because she, for her attendant hath, a lovely boy, stolen from an Indian king. She never seen, she's never seen so sweet a changeling. And jealous Oberon would have that child, knight of his train, to trace the forest's wild. But she, for force, withholds the boy, crowns him with flowers and makes him all her joy. And now they never meet. On grove or green, by fountain clear, or spangled starlight sheen, God, the lady square, so all the elves, for fear, creep into the acorn cups and hide him there. Either I mistake your shape and making quiet, or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin de Goodfellow. Are you not he that frights the maidens in the villagery? Skim milk and sometimes labor in the quern. Oh, and bootless make the breathless housewives churn. And sometimes make the drinker be bare at no barm. Mislead night wanders laughing at their harm. <laughs> oh, that good hobgoblin call you and sweet puff. You do their work, and they shall have good luck. Are not you he? Oh, that speaker's right. I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile when I a fat and bean-fed horse beguile, neighing in likeness of a filly full, and sometimes lurk I in a gossip's bowl, in very likeness, of a roasted crab, and then she drinks against her lips. I uh, bob, and on her withered dewlap pour the ale. <clears throat> the wisest aunt, telling the saddest tale. Sometime the three foot stool mistake me, and I slip from her bum down topples she, and Taylor cries and falls into a cough, and then the whole choir hold their hips and laugh and the waxen in their mirth, and sneeze and swear, a merrier hour never was there, but room fairy, ha <laughs> here comes Oberon. And here my mistress do, would that he were gone. Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What jealous Oberon, fairies, skip hence. I have forsworn his bed and company. Perry, rash wanton, am not I thy lord. Then I must be thy lady. But I know when thou hast stolen away from fairyland and the shape of corn sat all day playing on pipes of corn and versing love to amorous Thalada, why art thou here, come from the farthest steps of India? But, but that forsooth the bouncing Amazon, your buckskin mistress and your warrior love, to Theseus, to Theseus must be wedded and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou for shame, Titania, glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus? Didst thou not lead him through the glimmering night from Perigina, whom he ravished, and made him with fair Egles break his faith with Adriani and Antiope? These are the forgeries of jealousy, and never since the middle of summer spring met we on a hill, in dale, forest, or mead by paved fountain, or by rushy brook, or in the beach margins of the sea to dance our ringlets in the whistling wind. But thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds in vain, as in revenge, have sucked up from the sea contagious fog, which, fail, which falling in the land have every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. The ox hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain, the plowman lost his sweat, and the green corn hath rotted ere his youth attained a beard. The fold stands empty in the drowned field, and crows are fatted with the murin flock. The nine men's morris is filled with mud, the quaint mazes in the wanton green, for lack of tread are undistinguishable. The human mortals want their winter here. No night is now with him or Carol blessed. Therefore the moon, the governess of the floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air. 
the rheumatic diseases do abound. And though this distemper, this, this distemperature we see, the seasons alter, ori headed frost, fall in the fresh lap of the crimson rose, and on old hymns thin and icy crown, an odorous chaplet of sweet summer buds it is as a mockery set. The spring, the summer, the childing autumn, angry winter change their wonted liveries and the maize world by their increase now knows not which is which. And the same progeny of evil comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and originals. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? <laughs> I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairyland buys not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order. And in the spice Indian air by night, full often hath she gossiped by my side and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on the flood. When we have laughed to see sails conceive and grow big bellied with wanton wind, which she, with pretty and swimming gait following, her womb then rich with my young squire, would intimate and sail upon the land to fetch me trifles and return again, as the voyage rich with merchandise, but she, being mortal, of that boy did die. And for her sake, I do rear up her boy. And for her sake, I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus's wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away! We shall child down, downright if I, stay, if I longer stay. Well, go thy way! Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My dental puck, come hither. Thou rememberest, since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song and certain stars shot madly from their spheres to hear the sea maid's music. I remember. That very time I saw, but thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid all armed. A certain aim he took at a fair vessel, throned by west and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow, as it would pierce a hundred thousand hearts. <laughs> but I might see young Cupid's fiery shaft quenched in the chaste beams of the watery moon, and the imperial votress passed on in maiden meditation, fancy free. Yet, Mark died when a bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple with love's wound. And maidens call it love in idleness. Fetch me that flower. The herb I shewed thee once, the juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid, will make or man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb, and be thou here again ere the Leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girdle around the earth in 40 minutes. Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania when she lies asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing she then waking looks upon, be it on lion or bear or wolf or bull, on meddling monkey or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I can take this charm off her sight, as I can with another herb, I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible and will overhear their conference. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? One I'll slay, the other slayeth me. Thou told me they were stolen unto this wood. Here I am, wood with, and wood within this wood because I cannot see, meet my Hermia. Hence. Get thee gone, and follow me no more. Oh, you draw me, you hard-hearted adamant, but yet you draw not iron from my heart. It's true as steel, leave your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you? 
Do she? And even for that, do I love you the more? I am your spaniel and Demetrius. The more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me, but you use me, but as your spaniel. Burn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me, I forget to leave. Worthy as I am to follow you, what worse place can I beg in your love? And yet a place of high respect with me than to be used as you use your dog. <laughs> Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on I am sick when I look off, look not to you. You do impeach your modesty too much to leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that loves you not, to trust the opportunity of night and the ill counsel of a deserted place with the rich worth of your virginity. Oh, your virtue is my privilege. For that, it is not night when I do see your face. Therefore, I think I am not in the night. Your doctors would lack words of company. In my respect are all the world. Then how can it be said that I am alone when all the world is here to look at me? I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. The wildest have not such a heart as you. Run when you will, the story shall be changed. Apollo flies and Daphne holds the chase. The dove pursues the griffin. The mile high makes speed to catch the tiger. Bootless speed and cowardice pursuit. The warrior flies! From like Pasadena or Tyler. I will not stay thy questions. Let me go. Or if you follow me, not believe, but I shall do the mischief in the world. Ah, in the temple, in the town, the field, you do mischief. Demetrius, your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed and not, we're not made to woo. I'll follow thee and make a heaven out of hell. That's <laughs> the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, nymph. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Hast thou the flower there? Oh, Welcome, ah. chatty wanderer. Is it there? Ah, there it is. I pray thee, give it me. <laughs> I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where ox slips and the nodding violet grows. There sleeps Titania sometime of the night. Let me say more about these ox lips. They are quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and eglantine. There sleeps Titania sometime of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. And there the snake throws her enameled skin, weed wide enough to wrap a fairy in. And with the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it with the first thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. Affect it with some care, that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. And look thou, meet me ere the first cock crow. You're not, my lord. Your servant shall do so. Come now, a roundel and a fairy song, then for the third part of a minute, hence. Some to kill cankers in the must rose buds, some war with remis, remis for their leathern wings to make my small elves coats, and some keep back the clamorous owl that nightly hoots and wanders at our quaint spirits. Sing me now asleep, then to your offices and let me rest. La 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 la. Like snakes with your double tongue, born in hedgehogs, be not seen. Roots and blind worms do you wrong. I'm not near a fairy queen. There am I with melody. Sing a sweet melody. La 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 la
it's not near. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were doing a sing along. Sorry. It's the way. Now all is well. One aloof sent and sent to know. What thou seest when thou dost wake, do it for thy true love take. Love and languish for his sake, be it ounce or cat or bear pard or boar with bristled hair in thy eye that shall appear when thou wakest it is thy dear wake when some vile thing is near <laughs> fair love you grow faint with wandering in the wood and to speak truth i've forgotten our way we'll rest us for me if you think it good and tarry for the comfort of the day be it so lysander find you out of bed for I upon this bank will rest my head. When turf shall sell, serve as our pillow for us both, one heart, one bed, two bosoms, one troth. Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, fly off, uh, lie further off yet. Do not lie so near. Oh, take that, take the sense sweet of my innocence. Love takes the meaning in love's conference. I mean, that my heart unto yours is knit, so that but one heart we can make of it. Two bosoms interchange with an oath, so then two bosoms and a single troth. Then by your side no bedroom me deny, for lying so, Hermia, I do not lie. Lysander riddles pr very prettily. Now much beshrew my manners and my pride, if Hermia meant to say Lysander lied. But gentle friend, for love and courtesy, lie further off in human modesty. Such separation, as may well be said, becomes a virtuous bachelor and a maid. So far be distant, and good night, sweet friend. Thy love ne'er alter till thy sweet life end. Amen, amen, to that fair prayer say I. And then, and life when I am loyalty. Here is my bed. Sleeps give thee all his rest. With half that wish, the wisher's eyes be pressed. Becca, you're on mute. Fuck. <laughs> I was actually just saying that uh, through the forest I've gone and Athenian found my nun, on whose eyes I might approve the flower's force and stirring love. Night and silence, who is here? Oh, weeds of Athens he doth wear. And uh, this is he, my master said, despised the Athenian maid. And here are the Athenian sleeping sound on the dank and dirty ground. Oh, Pretty soul. She durst not he near this lack loved and kill courtesy. Churl, upon the eyes I'll throw all power, um, all the power this charm doth owe. And when thou wakest, let love forbid sleep his seat on thy eyelid. So wake when I am gone, for I must now to Oberon. Oh, thou kill me, sweet Demetrius. I charge thee hence. Do not haunt me thus. Oh, wilt thou darkling leave me? Do not so. <laughs> Stay on thy peril, and alone, I alone will go. I am so out of breath in this fond chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. Happy is Hermia, wherever she lies. <laughs> For she hath blessed and attractive eyes. How how came her eye so bright? Now it's all tears. So, so if my eyes are often washed with then hers. No, no, no. I am ugly as a bear. <laughs> <laughs> We're beasts that make me run away for fear. No, no marvel through Demetrius do as a monster fly my presence thus. What wicked and disassembly glass of mine made me compare with Hermia's fiery eyes? But who's here? Lysander? On the ground? Dead? Or asleep? I see no blood. 
the wound. Uh, Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. And run through fire, I will for thy sweet sake. Uh, Transparent Helena, nature shows art. That through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word. Is that vile name to perish on my sword? Uh, do not say so, Lysander. Say not so. What though he love your Hermia? Lord, what, <laughs> what though? Yet Hermia still loves you. Then be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent. The tedious minutes I have spent with her, with I, the tedious minutes I have, I with her have spent, not Hermia, but Helena I love, who will not change a raven for a dove. The will of man is by his reason swayed, and reason says you are not the worthier maid. Things growing are not ripe until their season, so I, being young, till now ripe not to reason. And touching now the point of human skill, reason becomes the marshal to my will, and leads me to your eyes where I overlook love's stories written in love's richest book. Wherefore was I to this king mockery bore? <laughs> when at your hands did I deserve this scorn? Is it not enough? Is it not enough, young man, that I did never nor never can? deserve a sweet look from Demetrius' eyes. But you, you must flout my insufficiency. Good troth, you do me wrong. Good smooth in such disdainful manner to woo. But fare you well. Before I must confess, I thought you lord of more true gentleness. Oh, that a lady of one man refused should of another therefore be abused. She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleep thou there, and never mayst thou come Lysander near, for as a serpent of the sweetest things the deepest loathing to the stomach brings, or as the heresies that men do leave, are hated most of those they did deceive. So thou, my serpent and my heresy, of all be hated, but the most of me, and all my powers address your love and might to honor Helen and be her knight. Uh, help me, Lysander, help me. Do thy best. Pluck this crawling serpent from my breast. Oh, I me for pity. What a dream was here. Lysander, look how I do quake with fear. Me thought to serve and eat my heart away. And you sat smiling at his cruel prey. Lysander, what removed? Lysander, Lord. What, out of hearing? Gone. No sound, no word. Alack, where are you speak? And if you hear, speak of all loves. I swoon almost with fear. No? Then I will perceive you all, not nigh, either death or you, I'll find immediately. Oh, say it again. Are we all met? Had, and here's a marvelous, convenient place for our rehearsal. This green blotch shall be our stage. This hawthorn break our tiring house, and we will do it in action as we will do it before the Duke. Peter Quince? Uh, what sayest thou, Bully Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? By a lake in a parlor, sphere. I, I believe that we must leave the killing out when all is done. Not a whit. I, I have a device to make all well. Uh -huh. uh, write me a prologue and let the prologue seem to say we will do no harm with our swords uh, and, and that Pyramus is, is not, not indeed killed. Not killed indeed. And, and for the more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus. But bottom, the weaver, huh? This will put them out of fear. Well, we will have such a prologue, and it shall be written in eight and six. No, no, ma ma make it two more. Let it be written in eight and eight. 
Will the ladies not be as feared as a lion? I fear, it. I promise you. Masters, you ought to consider with yourselves to bring in, God shield us, a lion among ladies is a most dreadful thing. For, for there is not a more fearful wild fowl than your, than your lion living, and we ought to look to it. Therefore, another prologue must tell he is not a lion. Nay, you must name his name, and half his face must be, be seen through the lion's neck. Mm -hmm. uh, and he himself must speak through saying thus, or to the same effect, ladies, or fair ladies, uh, I would wish you, or I, I would request you, or uh, I would <laughs> entreat you uh, not to fear, not to tremble, my life for yours. Mm -hmm. uh, if you think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. No, I, I am no such thing. I am a man as other men are. And there indeed let him name his name and tell them plainly he is Snug the Joiner. Well, it shall be so, but there is two hard things. That is to bring the moonlight into a chamber, for you know Pyramus and Thisbe met by, uh, meet by moonlight. Mm -hmm. Does the moon shine that night we play our play? A calendar, a calendar. Uh, 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 look, look in the almanac, find out moonshine. Find out moonshine. Um, mm, um, let's see, yes, it does shine that night. Well, why then you may may you leave a casement of the of the great chamber window where we play open and the moon may shine in at the casement. Aye, or else none no one must come in with a bush of thorns and a lantern and say he comes to disfigure or to present the person of moonshine. Then there is another thing. <clears throat> we must have a wall in the great chamber. For Pyramus and Thisbe, says the story, did talk through a chink of a wall. Well, you can never bring in a wall. What said you, Bottom? Uh, some man or other must present wall. Uh, and, and let him have some uh, plaster or, or some loam or some uh, rough cast about him to, to signify wall. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and let him hold his fingers thus. Uh, and, and through that, that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. If that may be, then all is well. <laughs> Come, sit down every mother's son and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. When you have spoken your speech, enter into that break, and so every, uh, everyone according to his cue. We have been homespuns. Have we swaggering here? So near the cradle of my fairy queen? What, a, a play toward? I'll be an auditor, an actor too, perhaps, if I see cause. <laughs> Speak, Pyramus. His B stand forth. Oh, that's yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I lost my spot. This B. Oh, this B. The flowers of odious, oh, uh, uh, savors sweet. Odors, odors. But uh, odors, savors sweet. So hath thy breath, my dearest Thisbe dear. But hark, a voice, stay thou but, but here a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. The stranger Pyramus airplane, airplane here. Uh, must I speak you, must I speak now? Yeah, that's mine. Oh, oh, sorry. Must I speak now? I, <laughs> Mary, you must. For you must understand he goes but to see a noise that he heard, and it is to come again. Most radiant, Pyramus, most lily white of hue, of color like the red rose of triumph and briar, most frisky, juvenile, and eke, most lovely Jew, as true as true as horse that yet would never tire. I'll meet thee, Pyramus, at noon. Ninus tomb, man, <laughs> why must you not speak that yet? That you answer to Pyramus, you speak all your part at once, cues and all. Pyramus, enter, your cue is passed, it is never tire. Oh, as true as true as horse, that yet would never tire. <laughs> if I were fair, Disby, 
Our only thine. Oh, monstrous, oh, strange. We are haunted. Pray thee, masters, fly, masters, hide. Help. I'll follow you. I'll lead you round, about around, through a bog, through a bush, through brake, through briar. Sometimes a horse I'll be, sometimes a hound, a hog, a headless bear. Sometimes a fire and neigh and bark and grunt and roar and burn like horse, hound, hog, bear, fire in every turn. Why do they run away? Uh, oh, th this is a knavery of them to make me afeard. Oh, Bosham, thou art changed. What do I see on thee? Oh, wh what do you see? Y you see an ass head of your own, do you? Oh, oh, bless thee, bottom, bless thee, <laughs> that are translated. And intermission. Let's take 15, everybody. Oh. Nice. 15. Oh, what do we want to do? 10? I, either. I'm Thank okay you with 10. either. Let, let's, take let's take 10. Let's take 10. Thank you, 10. Okay. Thank, Thank you, 10. 10. Oh, nine. Marked, and there's not answer. Nay. For indeed, who would set his wit to, to so foolish a bird? Who would give a bird the lie, though he cry cuckoo, never so? I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamored by thy note. So is mine eye enthralled by thy shape. And thy fair virtue's force for force doth move me. The first view I to say, to swear, I love thee. Methinks, mistress, you should have little reason for that. And yet, to say the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. Uh, the, the more the pity that some honest neighbor will not make them friends. Nay, I can bleak upon occasion. Oh, thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. No, not so, neither. Uh, but, but if I had wit enough to get out of, out of this wood, I have enough to serve mine own turn. Out of this wood, do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee. Therefore, go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend thee, and thou shalt fetch thee jewels from the deep, and sing while thou, while thou press flowers dost sleep. Now purge thy mortal grossness so that thou shalt like an airy spirit go. Peas blossom, cobweb, moth, and mustard seed. Ready. And I. And I. And I. Where shall we go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walk and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and dewberries, with purple grapes, green figs, and mulberries. The honey bags steal from the humble bees, and for night tapers crop their waxen thighs and light them at the fiery glowworm's eyes. To have my love to bed and to arise, and pluck the wings from the painted butterflies, to fan the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes. Not to him, else, and do him courtesies. Mortal! Hail. Hail! I cry your worship's mercy heartily. I, I beseech your worship's name. Cobweb. I shall desire you of more acquaintance, good Master Cobweb. If I cut my finger, I shall make bold with you. Your name, honest gentleman? Ease Blossom. I pray you, commend me to Mistress Squash, your mother, and to Master Please Cobweb. Your father, a uh, good master Peace Blossom, I shall desire you of more acquaintance too. Your name, I beseech you, sir. Mustard Seed. Good master Mustard Seed, I know your patience well. That same cowardly giant like ox beef hath devoured many a gentleman of your house. I promise you, your kindred hath made my eyes water ere now. I desire you of more acquaintance, good master Mustard Seed. Um. Wait upon him, lead him to my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye, and when she weeps, weeps every little flower, lamenting some enforced chastity, 
Tie up my love's tongue. Bring him silently. I wonder if Titania be awaked, that when, that what it was that next came in her eye, which she must dote on in extremity. Here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit? What night rule now about this haunted grove? <laughs> my mistress <laughs> with a monster. <laughs> Is it love? <clears throat> <laughs> near to close, near to her close and consecrated bower, while she was in her dull and sleeping hour, a crew of patches, rude mechanicals that work for bread upon Athenian stalls, were met together to rehearse a play. Indeed, for great Theseus's nuptial day, in the shallowest thick skin of the barren sort, who Pyramus presented as a sort, uh, forsook his scene and entered in a break. When I did him at this advantage take an, an asshole? <laughs> no, oh. I fixed on his head. A non That's not in my version. No, it's not. It says no. <laughs> Anon, his fist must be answered, <laughs> and forth my mimic comes. When they him spy and, and wild geese that for the creeping fowler eye are russet padded coughs. Um, many in sort, rising and cawing at the gun's retort, report, and sever themselves and madly sweep the sky, so at his sight, away all his fellows fly, and at our stamp here, or, and or one falls, he murders cries, and help from Athens calls, their sense thus weak, lost with their fears, the strong, made senseless things, begin to do them wrong, for briars and thorns at their apparel snatch, some sleeves, some hats, from yielders, all things catch. I led them on in this distracted fear, and sweet Pyramus translated there. <laughs> when in a moment, so it came to pass, to Tony awakened and straight away loved an ass! <laughs> <laughs> this falls out better than I could devise! But hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice, as I did bid thee do? Yeah, I took him sleeping. Yeah. So that is finished too. And the Athenian woman by his side, that when he waked, of course, she must be eyed. Stand close. This is that same Athenian. This is the woman, but uh, not, the, not the man. Her? Oh, why rebuke you him that loves you so? Lay breath so bitter on your bitter foe. Oh, eh. ah, ah, ah. Can't hear you. I'm unmuting her. Okay, there she goes. Say it again. She's chiding. <laughs> no, I but chide, but I should use these words. For thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, being o'er shoes in blood, plunge in the deep and kill me too. The sun was not so true unto the day as he to me. Would he have stolen away from sleeping Hermia? I believe as soon this whole earth may be bored and that the moon may through the center creep and so displease her brother's moon noontide it with antipods. It cannot be but the but thou hast murdered him. So should a murderer look so dead, so grim. So should the murder so should the murdered look, and so should I. Pierce through the heart with your stern cruelty. Yet you, the murderer, look as bright, as clear as yonder Venus in her glimmering sphere. What's this to my Lysander? Where is he? I, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him to me? I had rather give him, I had rather give his carcass to my hound. <laughs> out, dog! Out, cur! Thou drivest me past the bounds of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him then? Henceforth be never numbered among men. Oh, once tell true, tell true, even for my sake. Durst thou have looked upon him being awake? And hast thou killed him in sleeping? Oh, brave touch, well, could not a worm, an adder, do so much? An adder did it, for with doubler tongue than thine, thou serpent, never adder stung. You spend your passion on a misprized mood. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood. Nor is he dead, for aught that I can tell. I pray thee, tell me then that he is well. And if I could, what should I get therefore? A privilege never to see me more, 
and from thy hate present, uh, presence part I so. See me no more, whether he be dead or no. There is no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while I will remain. So what? sorrows, so sorrows, <clears throat> heaviness doth heavier grow, for death that bankrupt sleep doth sorrow owe which now in some slight measure it will pay if for his tender here I make some stay. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite and laid the love juice on some true love site. Of thy misprision thou must perforce ensue some true love turned and not a false turned true. The, the fate or rules that one man holding troth, a, a million fail, confounding oath on Oh. Yeah, about the wood go, swifter than the wind, and Helena of mm. Athens look thou find. All fancy sick she is, and pale of cheer, with sights of love that costs the fresh blood dear. By some illusion seen, I'll bring her here. I'll charm his eyes again, she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go, faster than a Tartar's bow. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sink an apple of his eye, when his love he doth espy. Let her shine as gloriously as the Venus of the sky, when she wakes, when thou wakes, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand, and the youth, by me, pleading for the lover's fee, Shall we their fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be. Stand aside. The noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then we, then will two at once will one. That must needs be sport alone. And those things that do best please me, thus befall uh, preposterously. <laughs> Why should you think that I should woo in scorn? Scorn and derision that I should... Scorn and derision never come in tears. Look, when I vow, I weep, and vow so born in their nativity all tears. How can these things in me be seems born to you, bearing the patch of faith to prove them true? <laughs> You do advance your cunning more and more. When truth kills truth, oh devilish, oh frail. These vows are Hermia's. Will you give her, oh her? Way of oath with oath, and you will nothing weigh. Your vows to her and me put in two scales. Will they even weigh? Both as light as tails. I had no judgment when to her I swore. <laughs> None in my mind. Now you give her over. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. Oh, Helena. Perfect, divine. To what, my love, shall I compare thine eye? Crystal is muddy. Oh, how right they show thy lips. Those kissing cherries, tempting grow. That pure congealing. White high Taurus snow that fanned with the eastern wind turns to a crow. And thou holdst up thy hand, oh, let me kiss this princess of pure white, this sealed bliss. Um, oh, spite, oh, hell, I see you all bent to set against me for your men of merriment. If you were civil and new courtesy, you would not do me thus much injury. Can you not hate me as I know you do, but you must join in souls to mock me too? If you were men, as men you are in show, you would not use a gentle lady so to vow and swear and super praise my parts. When I am sure you hate me with all your hearts, you both are rivals, and you love Hermia, and now both rivals to mock Helena, a trimmed exploit, a manly enterprise to conjure tears in a 
poor maid's eye. With your derision, none of this noble sort would you so offend a virgin and extort a poor soul patience all to make you sport? You were unkind, Demetrius. Be not so, for you love Hermia. This you know, I know. And here, with all God, good will, with all my heart, and Hermes' love, I yield you up my part, and yours of Helena to me bequeath, whom I do love, and will do to my death. Never did mockers waste more idle breath. Lysander, keep, your, keep thy Hermia, I will none. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to her, but as guest why sojourn, and now to Helen, home returned there to remain. Helen, it is not so. Disparage not the faith th thou dost not know, lest to thy peril thou, thou abide That'll dear. Like Look, where thy love comes, yonder is thy dear. Dark night that from the eye his function takes, the ear more quick <clears throat> of apprehension makes. Wherein it doth impair the seeing sense, it pays the hearing double, uh, double recompense. Thou art not by, uh, by mine eye, Lysander found, mine ear, I thank it, brought me to thy sound. But why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why should he say who love doth press to go? What love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander's love that would not let him abide, fair Helena, who more includes the night than all yon fiery o's and eyes of light? Why seekest thou me? Could not this make thee know that the hate I bear thee made me leave thee so? You speak not as you think. It cannot be. Helen? I thought I was Lysander. No, she's one of the confederacy. That was you. Oh, it's me? Yeah. Oh, well. Lo, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive that I have conjoined all three to fashion this false sports in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid, have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to bait me with this foul derision? Is all counsel that we two have share the sisters' vows, the hours we have spent? When have we had chide the hasty foot of time for parting us? Oh, and all of that is all forgot. <laughs> Oh, all school days, friendship, childhood, innocence. We, Hermia, are like two artificial gods. And have with our Neil created both one flower, both on one sampler, sitting on one cushion, both warbling of one song, both in one key. And if our hands, our sides, voices, and mind had been incorporated, so we grew together like a double cherry, seeming parted, but yet and unison impartation, two lovely berries, moldy so and yeah. so with two seeming bodies, but one part. <laughs> you are first, like Coton Herodly, duped but to the one and crowned with the one crest. And will you rent out our ancient love asunder to join me with men in scoring your poor friend? It is not friendly, tis not maidenly. Our sex as well as I may chide for you, though I... Leah oh, was not going to have it on stage. I am amazed at your, pa uh, yeah, your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. <laughs> I do preserve both, but yeah. Have you not set Lysander as in scorn to follow and praise my eyes and face? And you make your other lover, Demetrius, who even but now did spur me with his foot to call me goddess, now divine and rare, precious, celestial. <sighs> Wherefore speak he this to her he hates? 
And wherefore doth Lysander deny your love, so rich within soul, and tender me forsooth affection, but by your setting on, by your consent, would thou I be not so in grace with you? So hung upon on love, so fortunate but miserable most to unlove, this you should pity rather than despise. I understand not what you mean by this. I do preserve her counterfeit sad looks. May mouse upon me when I turn my back. Wink each other, hold the sweet jest. This for well carry shall be chronicle. If you had pity, grace, or manners, you would not make me such an argument. But fare ye well, tis partly my own fault, which death and absence soon shall be remedied. Hey, gentle Helena, hear my excuse, my love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent. Sweet, do not scorn her so. If she cannot contreat, I can compel. Thou canst compel no more than she entreat. Thy threats have no more strength than her prayers. Helena, I love thee, my life I do. I swear by that which I will, will lose for thee, to prove him false that says I love thee not. I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it so. Come quick. Lysander, where to tens all this? I weigh you, Ethiope. No, no, he'll seem to break loose, take on as you would follow, but yet not come. You are a tame man, go. Hang off, thou cat, thou burr, vile thing, let loose. Or I will shake thee for me like a serpent. Why are you grown so rude? What changes this sweet love? By love? Out, tawny tartar, out. Out, lonesome medicine, out, hated potion, hence. Do you not jest? <laughs> yes, soothe, and so do you. Demetrius, I will keep my word with thee. I would I had your bond, for I perceive a weak bond holds you. I'll not trust your word. What, should I hurt her? Strike her? Kill her dead? Although I hate her, I'll not harm her so. What can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me? Wherefore? Oh, me? What news, my love? Am I not, am not I Hermia? Are not you Lysander? I am as fair now as I am erewhile. Since night you love me, yet since night you left me. Why then you left me? Oh, gods forbid, in earnest shall I say. I, by my life, never did desire to see thee more. Therefore, be out of hope, of question, of doubt. Be certain, nothing truer, tis no jest, that I do hate thee and love Helena. What? Oh, me! You juggler! You canker blossom! You thief of love! What? Have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? <laughs> Fie! Ill fate! Have you no modesty? No maidenly shame? No touch of bashfulness? What will you tear in patient answer from my gentle tongue? Fie, fie, you counterfeit, you puppet, you! Puppet? Why so? I, that way goes the game. Now I perceive that she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height with her personage, her tall personage, her height forsooth she hath prevailed with him. And are you grown so high in his esteem because I am so dwarfish, dwarfish and so low? How low am I? Though thou painted may maypole, speak, how low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach unto thine eyes. Ooh, I pray you, thou you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. I was never cursed. I have no gift at all in shrewdness. I am a right maid for my cowardice. Let her not strike me. You perhaps may think, because she is something lower than myself, that I can match her. 
lower hark again. <laughs> Good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, Hermia. Did ever keep your counsel and never wronged you, save that in love unto Demetrius. I told him of yourself unto the wood. He followed you, for love I followed him. But he has chided me hence, and threatened me to strike me, spurn me, nay, to kill me too. And now, so you will let him queer go? To Athens will I bear folly back, and follow you no good? Now, let me go. You see, you see how simple and how fond I can be. Why? Get you gone. Who is that hinders you? A foolish heart that I leave here behind. What, with Lysander? <laughs> with Demetrius. Be not afraid. She shall not harm thee, Helena. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. Oh, when she's angry, she is keen and shrewd. She was a vixen when she went to school. And now she be little, she is fierce. Little again, nothing but low and little. Why will you suffer her to flout me thus? Let me come to her, let me come to her. Get you gone, you dwarf, you minimus of hindering not grass maid, you bead, you acorn. You are too officious in her behalf that scorns your services. Let her alone. Speak not of Helena. Take part. <clears throat> take not her part, for thou dost intend never so, li never so little show of love to her. Thou shalt abide it. Thou shalt she abide it. Not. Now follow if you darest to try who's right. Of um, thine or mine is most in Helena. Follow. Nay, I'll go with thee. Cheek by Joel. You, mistress, all this coil is long of you. Nay, go not back. I will not trust you. I no longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands then and mine are quicker for a fray. My legs are longer, though, to run away. Oh, I am amazed and know not what to say. What hast thou done? Still, this is thy negligence. Still thou mistakest, or else thou committest thy knaveries willfully. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Did you not tell me I would know the man by the Athenian garment he had on? And so far blameless proves my enterprise, that I have anointed an Athenian's eyes, and so far am I glad it so did sort, as their jangling I esteem as sport. Thou seest these lovers seek a place to fight. Hi, therefore, Robin, overcast the night. The starry welkin cover thou anon with drooping fog as black as Acheron, and lead these testy rivals so astray as one come not within another's way. Like to Lysander, sometime frame thy tongue, then stir Demetrius up with bitter wrong, and sometime rail thou like Demetrius, and from each other look thou lead them thus, till o'er thou brows death counterfeiting sleep with leaden legs and batty wings doth creep. Then crush this herb into Lysander's eye, whose liquor hath this virtuous property to take from thence all the error from his sight, to take all the error with his might and make his eyeballs roll with wanted sight. When they next wake, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision, and back to Athens shall the lovers send with league whose date till death shall never end. Whilst I in this affair do thee employ, I'll to my queen and beg her Indian boy. And then I will with her charmed eye release from monstrous view. And all things shall be peace. My fair lord, this must be done with haste. For nights with dragons cut the clouds full fast and yonder shines Aurora's harbinger. <sighs> At, at whose approach ghosts wandering here and there troop home to churchyards, damaged spirits all, that in crossways and floods have burial, already to their wormy beds are gone, and for, for fear lest day should look their shames upon, they willfully themselves exile from light, and must for eye consort with black-browed night. But we are spirits of another sort, 
I, with the morning's love, hath oft made sport, and like a forester the groves may tread, and even till the west eastern gate, all fiery red, opening on Neptune with fair blessed beams, turns into yellow gold his salt green streams. But notwithstanding, haste, make no delay, we may affect this business yet ere day. Up and down, up and down, I will leave him up and down. I hear it in field and town, goblin lead them up and down. Oh, here comes one. Sarah! Ah. I didn't have it highlighted. Okay. You're good. He goes before me and still tears on when I come. Oh, it's a uh, right, though. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> It's okay. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now. Here, villain, drawn and ready. Where art thou? I will weave with thee straight. Follow me then to plainer ground. Lysander, speak again. Thou run away, thou coward. Art thou fled? Speak. In some bush? Or dost thou hide thy head? Thou, thou coward, art thou bragging to the stars, telling the brushes that thou lookest for wars and wilt not come? Come, recreant, come, thou child, I'll whip thee with the rod he is defiled that draws a sword on thee. Yea, art thou he there? <laughs> Follow my voice, we'll try no manhood of it here. He goes before me and still dares, on, dares me on. When I come where he calls, then he's gone. The villain is much lighter heel than I. I followed fast, but faster did he fly. That fallen am I in dark, uneven way. And here will rest me. Come, thou gentle day. For if but once thou show me thy gray light, I'll find Demetrius and revenge this spite. Ho, 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 coward! Why comest thou not? Abide me if thou darest, for well I wot. Thou runnest before me, shifting every pace, and darest not stand, nor look me in the face. Where art thou now? Come hither, I am here. Nay, then, you mockst me. Thou, sh thou shalt but this, shalt, thou shalt buy this dear, if ever I thy face <laughs> by daylight see. Now, go thy way. Faintness constraints, constraineth me to measure out my length this cold bread this cold bed by day's approach look to be visited. Ooh, oh weary night, a oh, long tedious night, abate thy hour and shine comfort from the east, that I may go back Athens by daylight, from these that my poor company detest. I sleep that sometimes shuts the sorrow's eyes. Steal me away from my own company. Uh, oh, yet but three, come one more. Two of both kinds make up four. Oh, here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad, thus to make more poor females mad. Never so weary. Never so in woe, be dabbled with the dew and torn with briars. I can no further crawl, no further go. My legs can keep no pace with my desires. Here will I rest me till the break of day. Heaven shield Lysander, if they mean affray. On the ground, sleep, sleep sound. Um, uh. I'll apply to your eye, um, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye, and the country proverb known that every man should take his own. In your waking shall be shown, Jack will have Jill, not will go ill, and the man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well. Somebody's eating. No. Titania! Sorry! Good. Off. I'm back. She's sleeping. She's awake now. 
come sit thee upon this flowery bed while I, while I thy amiable cheeks do coy, and stick must roses in thy sleek smooth head and kiss thy fair large ear to my gentle joy. Where's Peas Blossom? Ready. Scratch my head, please, Peas Blossom. Where's Monsieur Cobweb? Ready. Monsieur Cobweb, good Monsieur, get you you your weapons in your hand and kill me a red-hipped humblebee <laughs> on the top of a thistle. And good Monsieur, bring me the honey bag. Do not fret yourself too much in the action, Monsieur. And good Monsieur, have a care the honey bag break not. I would be loath to have you uh, overflowing with a honey bag, Senor. Uh, where's Monsieur Mustard Seed? Right. Oh my God! Give me your neat, Monsieur Mustard Seed. Pray you, uh, leave your curtsy, good mon Monsieur. What's your will? Oh, nothing, good Monsieur, uh, but to help ca caval ca Cavalry Cobweb to scratch. I must be <laughs> barbers, Monsieur, uh, for methinks I am marvelous hairy about the face, and, and I am such a, a tender ass. I, if my hair do but tickle me, I must scratch. What? Wilt thou hear some music, my sweet love? I have a reasonable good ear in music. Uh, l l let's, let's have the tongues and the bones. Well, say, sweet love, what thou desires to eat? Uh, lost my place. Oh, uh, tr truly a peck of provender. Uh, I would munch your good dry oats. Methinks I have a great desire to a bottle of hay. Good hay. Uh, sweet hay. Half no fellow. I have a venturous fairy that shall seek the squirrel's hoard and fetch thee new nut. Oh. Dinner. I had rather... I, I had rather have a handful or two or, of dried peas, but I, I pray you, let none of your people stir me. I, I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Sleep thou, and I will wind, wind thee in my arms. Fairies, be gone, and be all ways away. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> What else, Titania? Oh. What else? Oh, oh Grace. Grace oh, how, oh, how she loves thee. Oh, how she dotes on thee. Oh. Welcome, good. Oh. I'm back. My bad. You're good. I'm You're good. Like, it cut off and I didn't see that I was right there. Okay. So doth, so doth the wood bind and the sweet honeysuckle gently entwist the female ivy so and rings the barky fingers of the elm. Oh, how I love thee. How I dote on thee. And then I sleep. <laughs> Welcome, good Robin. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage now I do begin to pity uh, for meeting her of late behind the woods, seeking sweet favors for this hateful fool. I did upbraid her and fall out with her, for she his hairy temples then had rounded with coronet of fresh and fragrant flowers. And that same dew, which sometime on the beds was wont to swell like round and orient pearls, stood now within the pretty floweret's eyes like tears that did their own disgrace bewail. When I had my pleasure taunted her, and she in mild terms begged my patience, I then did ask her of her changeling child, which straight she gave me, and her fairy sent to bear him to my bower in fairyland. And now I have the boy, I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. And, gentle Puck, take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swain, that he, awaking when the others do, may all to Athens back again repair, and think no more of this night's accidents, but as the fierce vexation of a dream. But first, I will release the fairy queen. Be as thou was wont to be, see as thou was wont to see, Diane's bud, or Cupid's flower, hath such force and blessed power. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. <sighs> my Oberon, what visions I have seen. Methought I was enamored of a ass. There lies your love. How came these things to pass? 
Oh, how mine eyes do loathe his visage now. Silence a while. Robin, take off this head. Titania, music call. And strike more dead than common sleep of all five the sense. Music ho. Oh. Music such as charmed sleep. Now when thou wakest, with thine own fool's eyes, Sound music. Come, my queen, take hands with me, and rock the ground where all these sleepers be. <laughs> yeah! Now thou and I are new in amity, and will tomorrow midnight solemnly dance in Duke Theseus's house triumphantly, and bless it to all fair prosperity. There shall the pairs of faithful lovers be wedded with Theseus, all in jollity. Very king attend and mark. I do hear, oh, the morning lark. Yes, I'd hear it too. Then, my queen, in silence sad, trip we after night's shade. We the globe can compass soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Come, my lord, and in our fl flight, tell me how it came this night that I sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground. <laughs> Go, one of you, find out to Forrester. But now our observation is performed. And since we have the Vaywood of the day, my love shall hear the music of my hounds. Uncouple in the western valley. Let them go. Dispatch, I say, and find the Forrester. We will, fair queen, up to the mountain's top. And mark the musical confusion of hounds and echo in conjunction. I was with Hercules and Cadmus once, when in a wood of Crete they bayed the bear with hounds of Sparta. Never did I hear such gallant chiding, for beside the groves, the skies, the fountains, every region near seemed all one mutual cry. I never heard so musical the discord, such sweet thunder. My, head, my hounds are bred of the Spartan kind, so flued, so sanded, and their heads are hung with ears that sweep away the morning dew. Crook kneed and dew lapped like Thessalian bulls, slow in pursuit, but mashed in mouth like bells each under each. A cry more tunable was never hollered to nor cheered with horn in Crete, in Sparta, nor in Thessaly. Judge when you hear, but soft. <laughs> what nymphs are these? Uh, my lord, this is my daughter here asleep, and this Lysander, this Demetrius is, this Helena, old Netter's Helena. I wonder if they're being here together. No doubt they rose up early to reserve the right of May. And here our intent, come here in Greece, uh, come here in grace to, to great, come here in grace to solemnity, but speak, Aegeus. Is not this today that Hermia should give the answer of her choice? It is, my lord. Go, bid the huntsmen wake them with their horns. Tomorrow, friends, St. Valentine is past. Begin these woods words, but a couple now. Uh, uh, I pray you all stand up. I know you are two rival. My lord, comes this gentle concord in the world. Hatred is so far from jealousy to sleep by hate and fear no enmity. My lord, I shall reply amazedly, half asleep, half waking. But as yet, I swear I cannot truly say how I came here. But as I think, for truly what I speak, and now I do. Bethink me, so it is. I came here with Helena, Heather, or with, I came with Hermia, Heather. Our intent was to be gone from Athens, where we might, without the peril of Athenian law. Enough, enough. My lord, you have enough. I beg the law, the law upon his head. They would have stolen away. They would. Demetrius, thereby to have defeated you and me, you of your wife, me of my consent, of my consent that she should be your wife. My lord, Sir Helen told me of their stealth, of this their purpose hither to this wood, and I in fury hither followed them. Sir Helena, in fancy following me, but my good lord, I would not by what power, but by some power it is, my love to Hermia melted as the snow, it seems to me now, as the remembrance of an idol god, which in my childhood I did dote upon. And all the faith, the virtue of my heart, the object of the 
pleasure and the pleasure of mine eye, it is only Helena, it's with her, my lord, was I betrothed ere I saw Hermia. But like in sickness did I load this food, but as in health, come to my natural taste. Now I do wish it, love it, long for it, and will forever, forevermore be true to it. Fair lovers, fortunately met. Of this discourse we are more, we, will, we more will hear anon. Each, I will overbear your will. For in the temple, by and by with us, these couples shall eternally be knit. And for the morning now is something worn. Our purpose hunting shall be set aside, away with us to Athens. Three. Behold a feast in great solemnity. Come, Hippolyta. These things seem small and undistinguishable. Methinks I see these things with parted eye, when everything seems double. So methinks I have found Demetrius like a gemel, my own, and Are you sure that we are awake? It seems to me that yet we sleep, we dream. Do not you think the Duke was here and bid us follow him? Yeah, and my father. And Hippolyta. And he did bid us follow to the temple. Why then, we are awake. Let's follow him. And by the way, let us recount our dreams. When my cue comes, call me and I will answer. My next is most fair Pyramus. Hey ho! <laughs> Peter Quince? Flute the bellows mender? Snout the taker? Startling? God's my life. Stolen hints have left me asleep. I have had a, a most rare vision. I have had a dream. Past the wit of man to say what dream it was. Me, man is but an ass if he go about to expound this dream. Man, I, I, me, me thought I was. There is no man can tell what. I, me, me thought I was. And, and me thought I had. But man is but a patched fool if he will offer to say what me thought I had. The eye of man hath not heard. The ear of man hath not seen. Man's hand is not able to taste, his tongue to conceive, nor his, his heart to report what my dream was. I will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. I, I, yeah, I sh it shall be called Bottom's Dream, because it hath no bottom. And, and I will sing it in the latter end of our play, before the Duke. Uh, peradventure, it, to make it more the, gracious, the more gracious, I shall sing it at her death. Have you sent to Bottom's house? Is he come home yet? Yeah. Yeah. Not be heard of. Out of doubt, he is transported. He cannot be heard of. I don't doubt he is transported. Or Devon? Oh, it is not possible. If you have not a man in all of Athens able to discharge Pyramus, but he. No, he is simply the best wit of any handicapped man in Athens. Yea, and the best person too. And he is very paramour for a sweet voice. You must say paragon. A paramour is, God bless us, a thing of naught. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Masters, the Duke is coming from the temple, and, and there are two or three lords and ladies more married. If our spark had gone forward, we had all been made men. He's trying. I guess she's done. Um, mm -hmm. Where are these lads? Where are these hearts? <gasps> what? Oh, oh, most courageous day, oh, most happy hour. Masters, I am to discourse wonders, but ask me not what. For if I tell you I am not true Athenian, <laughs> but I, I will tell you everything right as it fell out. 
Let us hear it, sweet bottom. No, not, not, not a word of me. All that I will tell you is that the Duke hath dined. Get, get your apparel together, good strings to your beards, new ribbons to your pumps, mo uh, meet presently at the palace. Every man look over his part, for the short and the long is, our play is preferred! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> In any case, uh, uh, let Thisbe have clean linen, and let not him that plays the lion pare his nails, for they shall hang out for the lion's claws. <laughs> and, and, and most dear actors, eat no onions nor garlic, for we are to utter sweet bread. And I, I do not doubt, but <laughs> say it is a sweet comedy. <laughs> no more words. Away. Go. Away. Is it strange, my Theseus, that these lovers speak of? More strange than true. I never may believe these antique fables, nor these fairy toys. Lovers and madmen have such seething breaths, <laughs> such shaping fantasies that end more than cool reason ever comprehends. The lunatic, the lover, and the poet are of imagination all compact. Okay. One of these more devils than vast hell can hold, that is, the madman, the lover, all is frantic, sees Helen's beauty and brow of Egypt. The poet's eye, in fine frenzy rolling, doth glance from heaven to earth, from earth to heaven, and as imagination bodies forth the forms of things unknown. The poet's pen turns them shapes and gives them airy nothing in local habitation and a name. Such trick has the strong imagination, but if it would but not apprehend some joy, it comprehends some bringer of that joy, or in the night, imagining some fear. How easy is a bush supposed to bear? But all the story of the night told over, and all their minds transfigured so together, where witnesseth and fancies image, and goes to something of great constancy. But that's howsoever strange and admirable. Here come the lovers, full of <laughs> joy and mirth. Joy, gentle friends, joy and fresh days of love accompany your hearts. <laughs> Joy and gentle friends, joy and fresh days of love accompany your hearts. Sarah's muted. Yeah, Sarah's uh, muted. Sarah. Nice, good check. Ah, okay. More than to us, wait in your royal walks, your board, your bed. Come now, what masks, what dances shall we have? This long age of three hours between our after supper and bedtime. Where is our usual manager of mirth? What revels are in hand? Is there no play to ease the anguish of a torturing hour? A call to illustrate. Here, mighty, mighty Theseus. Say, what abridgment have you for this evening? What mask? What music? How shall we beguile the lazy time if not with some delight? There is a brief uh, how many sports are ripe. Make choice of which your highness will see first. The Battle of the Centaurs to be sung by an Athenian eunuch <laughs> to the heart. Shit. Well, none of that. <laughs> that I have told my love in glory of kinsmen, my kinsman Hercules. The riot of the tipsy Bucknells tearing Thracian singer in their rage. That is an old device and it was played when I from Thebes came last to conqueror. Ice three muses mourning for the death and learning, late deceased in beggary. <laughs> that is some satire, keen and critical, not sorting with nuptial ceremony. A tedious brief scene of a young Pyramus and his love Thisbe. Very tragical mirth. Merry and tragical, tedious and brief. That is of ice and wondrous strange snow. How shall we find the concord of this discord? A play there is, my lord, some ten words long, which is as brief as I have known a play. But by ten words, my lord, <laughs> it is too long, which makes it tedious. Uh, for in all the play, there is not one word apt, one player fitting, and tragical, my noble lord, it is, for Pyramus thunith, uh, therein doth kill himself, which, when I saw rehearsed, I must confess, made mine eyes water, but more merry tears the passion of loud laughter never shed. <laughs> what are they to? Uh, what are they that do the play? Hard-handed men. 
that work in Athens here, which never labored in their minds till now, uh, and now have toiled their unbreathed memories with this same play against your nuptial. And we will hear it. No, oh, no, my lord, it is not for you. I have, I've heard it over, and it is nothing, nothing in the world, unless you can find sport in their intents, extremely stretched and conned with cruel pain to do you service. I will hear that play. <laughs> for never anything can be amiss when simpleness and duty tender it. Go, bring them in, <laughs> and take your places, ladies. I love not to see wretchedness nor charged and duty in his <laughs> service perishing. Why, gentle sweet, you shall see no such thing. Yes, as they can do nothing in this kind. The kind are we to give them the thanks for nothing. <laughs> Us what shall be to take what they may. But poor duty cannot do, no respect, takes it in the might, not merit. For I have come, great clerks have purposed to greet me with premeditated welcomes where I have seen them shiver and look pale, make periods, periods in the midst of sentences, throttle their practice accent with their fears, and in conclusion, dumbly have broke off, not paying me a welcome. Trust me, sweet. Out of this silence, yet I picked a welcome, and in the modesty of fearful duty, I read as much from the rattling tongue of saucy and audacious eloquence. Thereof, and tongue-tied simplicity, least speak most of my capacity. So please, your grace, the prologue is announced. <laughs> Let him approach. Da, 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 da. <clears throat> if we offend, it is with our good will that you should think we come not to offend, but with this good will to show our simple skill that is the true beginning of our end. Consider then we might we come in despite. Uh, we do not come as minding to content you. Our true intent is all for your delight. We are not here <laughs> that you should here repent you, the actors at hand, and by their show you shall know all that you are like to know. This fellow does not stand upon points. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, buddy. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, my chance. Good fella. Yes, uh, nice, Sandra. Ah. He hath read his prologue like a rough shot. If he knows not to stop, a good moral, my lord, it is not enough to speak, but to speak true. Indeed, he hath played on his prologue like a child on a recorder, <laughs> a sound, but not in government. His speech was like a tangled chain. Nothing impaired, but all disorder. <laughs> Who is next? <laughs> Gentles, uh, uh, perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder <laughs> on, truth make all things plain. <clears throat> this man is Pyramus, if you would know. <laughs> this beauteous lady, this be is certain. <laughs> Um, this man with lime and rough cast off present wall, that vile wall which did these lovers sunder, and through wall's cheek, poor souls they are content to whisper, at which let no man wonder. <clears throat> uh, this man with lantern, dog, and bush of thorn presented moonshine. For if you will know, by moonshine did these lovers think no scorn. To meet at Ninus' tomb there, there to woo, this grisly beast which lion hat by name, uh, the, the trusty Thisbe come first by night, did scare away, or rather did affright. As she, and as she fled, her mantle did fall, which lion vile with bloody mouth did stain. Anon comes Pyramus, sweet youth and, and tall, and he and finds his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain. Whereat with blade, with bloody, blameful blade, he bravely broached his boiling bloody breast. <laughs> and Thisbe, tearing in mulberry shade, his dagger drew and died. For all the rest, let lion, moonshine, wall, and lovers twain at large discourse while here they do remain. <laughs> I wonder if the lion be to speak. No wonder, my lord, one my lion may when many asses do.
Eh, eh. Wall is, um, hold on. Who's wall? Hold on, guys. No. Oh, oh, Brit. Can't hear you. Wall is, wall is silent. Brit, Brit, <laughs> unmute, unmute, Brit. Oh no, okay. Oh no. Still can't hear you for some reason. Hold on one sec, guys. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Cool. yeah. Whoa. No Technology wonder, my words. lord, one line may when many asses do. In this same interlude, it doth befall that I, one snout by name, present a wall. And such a wall, as I would have you think, that had in it a crannied hole or chink, through which the lovers Pyramus and Disby did whisper, of, whisper often very secretly. This loam... This rough cast and this stone doth show that I am the same wall, the truth is so, and that this cranny, right and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. You desire a lime and hair to speak better. It is, uh, it is the wittiest partition that ever I heard discourse, my lord. Pyramus draws near the wall, silence. Oh, grim, look at Nat. Oh, not with you so black. Oh, not which air thou art when day is not. Oh, not. Oh, not. Alack, alack, alack. I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. And thou, oh, whoa. Oh, sweet, oh, lovely wall. Thou stand between her father's ground and mine, thou wall, oh, wall, oh, sweet and lovely wall. Show me thy chink to blink through with mine eye. Thank you, <laughs> the wall. Uh, uh, Jove, shield thee well for this. But what's the eye? No, this be, do I see? Oh, wicked wall through whom I see no bliss. Cursed be thy stones for thus deceiving me. <laughs> the wall, methinks, being sensible, should curse again. Uh, no, in truth, sir, uh, he, he should not. Uh, uh, deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. Uh, she is to enter now, and I am to spy her through the wall. You shall see it will fall apart, as I, as, I sh as I told you. Oh, yonder she comes. Oh, wall, full often hast thou heard my bones, departing my fair pyramids from me. My cherry lips have often kissed thy stones, thy stones with thy life, and hair in it up and lift. I see a voice. Now will I to the chink to spy, and I can hear my Thisbe's face. Thisbe? My love, thou art. My love, I think. I think what, uh, think what thou wilt. I am thy lover's grace, and like Lymander, I am trusty still. And I, like Helen, till the fates be killed. Not Shaphilus to Procris was so true. As Shaphilus to Procris, I to you. Oh, kiss through me through the whole of this vile wall. <laughs> <laughs> I kiss the wall's hole. Like, yeah. Not your lips at all. Wilt thou at Ninny's tomb meet me straightway? I life, time death, I come without delay. Wall is silent again. Wall! Oh no. Oh, Thus no. have I walled my part <laughs> discharge. So, and being done thus, wall doth go away. Now is the mirror down between the two neighbors. No remedy, my lord, when walls are so willful to hear without warning. This is the silliest stuff that ever I heard. The best in this kind are but shadows, and the worst are no worse, if imagination amend them. It must be your imagination, and not theirs. <laughs> if we imagine no worse of them than they of themselves, they may pass for excellent men. <laughs> Here, come to noble beast in, a man and a lion. You ladies, you whose gentle hearts so fear the smallest monstrous mouth that creeps on floor. 
May now perchance both quake and tremble here. Then know that I snug the joiner am. A lion fell, nor else a lion's dam. And for if I should as lion come into this place, into this place, toward pity on my life. A very gentle beast of a good conscience. The very best at a beast, my lord, that e'er I saw. This lion is very a fox for his valor. True, and a goose for his discretion. Not so, my lord, for his valor cannot carry his discretion, and the fox carries the goose. His discretion, I am sure, cannot carry his valor, for the goose carries not the fox. As well, leave it to his discretion, and let us listen to the moon. This lantern doth the horned moon present. He should have worn the horns on his head. <laughs> he has no crescent, and his horns are invisible within the circumference. <laughs> this lanthorn doth the horned moon present. Myself, the man, in the moon do seem to be. This is the greatest error of all the rest. The man should be put into the lanthorn. How is this the man in the moon? He dares not come for there for the candle, for you see, it is already in snuff. Now I am aweary of this moon, what he would change. It appears by his small light of discretion that he's in the wane, but yet in courtesy, in all reason, we must take the time. Uh, all that I have to say is to tell you that the lanthorn is the moon, I, the man in the moon, this horn bush, my thorn bush, and this dog, uh, my dog. <laughs> I'm sorry, my dog. Um, why all these should be in the lanthorn, for all these are in the moon. But silence, here comes this bee. Oh, no, no, this bee. Oh, oh, this bee, okay. <laughs> This is Where is my love? <laughs> Laura and stuff. Well roared, lion. Uh, well run, Thisbe. Well shown, moon. Uh, truly, the moon shines with a good grace. Well moused, lion. And so the lion vanished. And then came Pyramus. And so the lion vanished. Oh, sweet moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. Uh, for by thy gracious golden glittering gleams, I, I trust to take a true <laughs> Thisbe sight. But stay, oh spot, but mark poor knight, what dreadful dole is here. Eyes, do you see? How can it be? Oh dainty duck, oh dear, oh thy mantle good, what stained with blood? Approach, ye furies fell. Oh, fates, come, come, cut thread and thrum, quail, crush, conclude, and quell. This passion and the death of a dear friend would go near to make a man look sad. Oh, but sure, my heart, but I pity the man. Oh, wherefore, nature, didst thou lion's frame, since lion thou hath here deflowered, my dear, which is no. No, which was the fairest dame that lived, that loved, that liked, that looked with cheer? Come tears, confound, out sword, out, A and wound, oh, oh, the pap of Pyramus, ay, ay, that life left pap where heart doth hop, uh, uh, thus I die, thus, thus. Thus, uh, now I'm dead. Now am I fled. My soul is in the sky. Oh, uh, tongue, lose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. Now die, die. Uh, 
Now die, but an ace for him, for he is just one. Less than an ace, man, for he is dead. He is nothing. With the help of a surgeon, he, he might yet recover and prove an ass. No chance Moonshine is gone before Thisbe comes back and finds her lover. Oh, she will find him by starlight. Oh, here she comes, and her fashion ends the play. <laughs> Methinks she should not use a long one for such a pyramus. I hope she. A moat will turn the balance. Which pyramus, which Thisbe, is the better? He for a man, God warrant us. She for a woman, God bless us. She has spied him already with those sweet eyes. And thus she means to delict. What? Dead, my dove? Oh, Pyramus, arise! Speak, speak, quite so. Dead, dead, a tomb. Must cover thy sweet eyes. These my lips, this cherry nose, these yellow cowslip cheeks are gone, are gone. <laughs> Lovers make moan. No. Oh. His eyes were green as leaf. Oh, sister three, come, come to me. With my hand as pale as yours, lay them in gold. Since you have shore, with tears of this thread of silk, tongue not a word. Come, trusty sword. Come, blade, my breast imbrue, and farewell, my friends. Thus this be ends. Adieu, adieu. <laughs> the moonshine and lion are left to bury the dead. Aye, and wall too. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, no, no, I assure you that the wall is is down that part of their their fathers. Uh, will it please you to see the epilogue or to, to hear a uh, Bergamask dance between two of our company? No epilogue, I pray you. <clears throat> for your play needs no excuse, never excuse. For when the players are all dead, there needs none to be blamed. <clears throat> Mary, if he that writ it had played Pyramus and hanged himself from Thisbe's garter, it would have been a fine tragedy. And so it is. Truth, and very notably discharged. Uh, but come, your Bergamask, I, I let your epilogue alone. The iron tongue of midnight hath told twelve lovers to bed. <coughs> Very time. I fear we shall outsleep the coming morn, and uh, uh, as much as we this night have overwatched, this palpable gross play well beguiled the heavy gate of night. Sweet friends, to bed. A fortnight hold we in this solemnity, and nightly revels with jollity. Now the hungry lion roars, and the wolf behowls the moon, whilst the heavy plowman snores, all with weary task foredone. Now the wasted brands do glow, whilst the screech owl, screeching loud, puts the wretch that lies in woe in remembrance of the shroud. Now is the time of night that the graves, all gaping wide, every one lets forth his sprite in the church way paths to glide. And we ferry that do run by the triple wicked steam in the presence of the sun, following darkness like a dream. Now our frolic. Not a mouth shall disturb this hallowed house, as I am sent with room before to sweep the dust behind the door. Through the house give glimmering light by the dead and drowsy fire. Every elf and fairy sprite hop as light as bird from briar. And this ditty after me sing and dance a trippingly. First, rehearse your song by rote, to each word a, a warbling note. Hand in hand with fairy grace, will we sing and bless this place. Now until the break of day through this house each fairy stray, to the best bride bed will we, which by us shall blessed be, and the issue there create ever shall be fortunate. So shall all the couples three ever true and loving be, and the blots of nature's hand shall not in their issue stand. Never mole, hair lip, nor scar, 
nor mark prodigious such as are despised in nativity shall upon their children be with this field do consecrate every fairy take his gate and each several chamber bless through this palace with sweet peace and the owner of it blessed shall ever in safety rest trip away make no stay meet me all by break of day if we shadows have offended think that this and all is mended but you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear and this weak and idle theme no more yielding than a dream gentles do not reprehend if you pardon we will mend and as i am honest puck if we have unlearned luck now to scape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long. Else the puck a liar called. So good night until you all. Give me your washed hands if we be friends. And Robin shall restore amends. Quack out! Yay! Woo! Woo! All right, let's, let's do bows. Um, the fairies, <laughs> Sarah and Catherine. And, uh, and Cassidy. Yay, Fairy, y'all! And, um, Helen. And Bottom. And, um, uh, Francis Flute. Yay! 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 Um, and see who's next. Let's do, uh, the Fairies. Uh, Oberon and Titania. And Puck, I guess. Yay! Yay! <laughs> um, the Lovers. Uh, Sarah D and Sydney and Ka Cassidy and uh, Andreas, yay! <laughs> yay! <laughs> and Aegeus, yay! <laughs> yeah, there's a the battle without me. He's in a boat, but yay! Oh my god, you guys, that was awesome. Did you all so fun? That was, that was so fun. fun. That was really fun. I agree. I love this. Here's the thing I'm thinking of getting maybe um, much ado together for next weekend. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll send out a, a, a group a, a post. Um, uh, okay. See if y'all are available. I mean, again, as you said, Katie, I don't know where we're all going because there's this big party that I've heard of that's nowhere. Um, uh, um, there's the party. Wait, party in quarantine. No party. <laughs> no quarantine party. Right now. It's everyone um, partying in their own house. Kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> I've never heard of Actually, we could have a party on the beach, but we'd have to be oh, no. oh, doing lines or, or oh, circles around us. Of like, <laughs> you, go ahead, wait, wait. stay back, six feet. <laughs> yeah, right. that's, that's such a party. If we keep doing this long enough and we run out of material, I do have a play. It's only seven characters, though. Oh, cool. That's fine. Plus, you know, since I'm the author, you could probably ad lib as much as you want without pissing me off too bad. <laughs> well, that sounds like a challenge. Ad lib away. I love it. There's all these little animals. There's the, Drew and Kate, Dre and Katie. You have your tiny white dog, and there's a tiny white dog in the corner. Helen Ray, tiny white dog. I love Catherine. all the animals. She's sleepy. My yes. dog's somewhere in the corner. She came in here There's for like two right and she left. Her and oh, was the dog. Best. You're popular. People love you. Oh, goodness. Kevin Bacon. I think Kevin Bacon yes. unplugged my... Uh, yeah, he unplugged. Kevin Bacon unplugged. Oh, his name is Kevin Bacon. I love it. <laughs> oh, my God. That's cute. So now you're six degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Leo, would, he, he was, he's my cat. He doesn't want to come and hang out. He's like, you're doing weird voices and that freaks me out. So. <laughs> Jonathan, I'm glad you left at one point but left the screen on so your cat just came right up to the laptop and started <laughs> sniffing and yawning. Yes. Jonathan was a cat for a solid 15 minutes. Yes. Percy is like obsessed with iPads because he did those like fish iPad games. So he yeah. started coming to us. I turned the screen because he was tapping. He loved Aww. Helen the most. He Aww. kept tapping on Helen. Oh, cute dog. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, I love sad. pets. Now I want to do this with you guys. 
Yeah. Mm. Who knows? Maybe when mm. people are scared to come out and come out of their houses again. Mm. Uh, oh my gosh, big black cat. Rebecca, oh. thank you for putting this together. No problem. Yeah, thank you so really much. Really great. They, yeah, this was that. fun. Together, yeah, Rebecca. Thought about it. And you know, I had a lot of anxiety about it because I was like, how? I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's, not the, it's not the same thing. And I actually cried like in the middle of you guys reading because let's be honest, it's just hard. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's just being with people on stage. I know. Oh, I know we were all in shows. We were all doing shows. Yeah. We all just got shut down and it's the best thing. But it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. And then did not know when we're going to be able to do our craft again. Mm -hmm. And then what theaters are going to survive. And Oof. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Oh, speaking of which, yeah. shameless plug. Um, hmm. I work at the Alley Theater and we just posted the information for our digital version of 1984. Mm -hmm. well, isn't it, it, you have to pay, right? It's a, yeah, it just went live. They haven't even done the press release yet, um, but it's on the website. I'll link it through the chat. Um, so cool. we can only sell as many tickets as we would have seats Seat. for the show through close. So um, there's a limited number of tickets. So if you want to see it for $20, I recommend buying it sooner yeah. rather than later. Oh, 20 is not bad. No, it's mm -hmm. not. That's good. Beyond, um, um, is separate. it through a, job. an app or is it through just the website? Mm, doop, 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 doop. It just says purchase tickets. I'm not sure how IT handled it. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't know if you could stream okay, it through friends. a certain We're going to sign audience. off. We'll see you guys later. Bye. 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 Um, oh, no, she needs yeah, I'm probably going to escape too. Thanks for the opportunity. Enjoyed it. Y'all have fun. Bye, Thank you. Yeah. Ramses are going to sign off as well. Thank you so much. This was so fun. Oh, hey, uh, we uh, we bye. I'm sorry. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Have fun. Yeah, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. Wait, bye. Okay. I'll text. I'm also going to peace okay. out. It was a okay. nice meeting you guys. Really enjoyed doing this. Becca, really good idea. Yeah. So. It's a really good way to spend my Thursday night, Friday night. Oh, with the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And are y'all cool if I post it? I didn't ask the other everybody, but is, is anybody super uncomfortable? Sydney, you're, you're feeling it's good? Like, you're awesome. I'm okay. Sydney, I told you you would be. I told you. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, you can post it. I'm okay. Before anybody else skedaddles, um, I thought everybody did an awesome job. Yeah. Thank awesome. you. Yeah. I, I think that, I mean, it, it was awesome how, you know, in, in, uh, in a lot of, you know, actual plays, you know, where people rehearse and do it on stage, there's, there's, the, there's su such a level of, uh, of, you know, you have to get it right. Which is, you know, that's not a bad thing. You de you definitely do have to get it right. But, but I mean, we we everybody here just had yeah. fun, and mm -hmm. you know, weren't, weren't wasn't worried about if they were doing doing.